stuffed in your pocket for the last hundred days. Go get my bath and take it out on the slaves. So grease up your baby for the ball on the hill. Polish them rockets now, swallow those pills and say no. Sci-fi hamster wheel. Ah, oh, that's good stuff. Oh, hello, folks. I'm not here to show music or a really good tasting beer. I'm here for one reason and one reason only. So you heard my singing, but let's hit. My Yes, and that's true, folks. Today's hobo predictions for I'm the one, the only. I am a hobo Tom. I saw this can design, uh, and I'll be honest, Total Wine Spirits, best place ever. It's a sci fi hamster wheel. India Pale Ale. I mean, one, that's just too sweet for life. But no, actually, it's just too cute looking. Again, you put a hamster with a robot laser eye and paint some neon colors in the background or pastel colors in the background. And say it's an India Pale Ale. It's one pint. Good tasting. Well priced beer. Cheers to you, folks. And again, I'm not here to show that, though. I wish I had paid for that. Um, I have some bad news. Well, good news, bad news. Probably more so ugly news. Yep. Slammiversary Impact's marquee event is this weekend, and I'll be working. So I have to work 4 to 11.45. I'm going to miss Slammiversary for the first time. Oh, jeez. I've been doing this for five years. Seven years? Seven or eight years I've been watching Slammiversary. I, oh wait, major announcement. Yes, I, the one, the only Hobo Tom, will be leaving this job. Um, things happened and are happening that I am not okay with. Um... One, <laughs> it would be funny if my boss didn't watch. First of all, it would be amazing if my boss watched this. Cheers to you, boss. If you're actually watching this. But one, probably the one thing, no manager or assistant manager or anyone in management should make someone else stay an extra half hour after they clocked out of work. I can understand five or ten minutes to, to count stuff and settle things. But but half an hour and I have a and 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 it's been slowly growing towards that it's been yeah five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen. It's not right to keep people there when they're not getting paid after working there. People just want to go home and relax. People say, oh, it's only half an hour. You know what, it's a half hour in my house where I can use my own toilet, where I can flop on my own couch, where I have delicious, because I am well over the age of 21, adult beverages at home. Should I choose to partake of them? And I have 
Well, DVDs are video games. But I can say, you know what? I need to decompress. I need to chill out. I need some escapism. And so Fallout 4, which is just seeming to do the same thing over and over again. But it's still fun, though. And it keeps me occupied. It's always good. I do have to figure out a few things in it. Yeah, I still have a PS4. I still have to, I still have to finish Fallout 4. And then I have Assassin's Creed Origins to play, so... I'll be entertained for a while. But yeah, that was one thing. Me being stuck at the store, not getting paid for half an hour while the assistant manager does paperwork does not fly well with me. I I would not do it to anyone. I'll tell you what. If I kept people there over like seven minutes, I'd probably be pissed at myself. And yeah, oh, but uh, people stay late all the time. Yeah. When I was a teacher, I would stay a little bit after school too. But guess what? It was just me. I didn't keep my students late. I didn't keep the secretary later. I didn't keep the cleaning staff later. If I stayed later, that was on me. And it did not have anything to do with any, it. It didn't affect anyone else. Second thing, um, one should never take out the frustrations they have. If you're in retail, if you have frustrations with the customers being bad customers, let's be honest, this is Bum Tona Beach we're talking about, you should never take it out on your, empo in your employees, underlings, staff, whatever. If you tell someone to do a job, you should not be upset that they did not finish the first thing they were supposed to do because you told them to go do something else. That's inexcusable. I had it out once with her, and it's like, listen, I'm one person. You can't tell me to do three things, come back two minutes later, and tell me to do five more things when I still haven't done the second thing because I'm busy doing what I should be doing. It's like, there's a whole line of customers that can wait. Oh, but you're almost done. It's like, I got 90% of it done. There's other stuff I need to get done before the end of the night. So, it, it's a tough choice. I asked around. I made sure. I, one, I, one, I wanted to make sure I didn't do it. I told my, my people under, because I am, like, under assistant manager. Even though we don't have a key, more of a lead, because I have an education and I, and honestly, it's not that hard. It's just time consuming. I made sure I'm like, hey, Alex, did I ever take on my frustrations on customers with, at you? And you don't have to answer it if you don't want to. They're like, dude, no. What the hell are you talking about? Okay. So yeah. And I've never kept people unpaid past their time. Every so often, if it's been really busy, I'm like, yeah, hey, can you take another customer? And they have to stay like five or ten minutes. Yeah, that's fine. But guess what? They're still on the clock. They're getting paid. I wasn't getting paid. And I have a feeling that this would be a normal recurrence and to all those people out there, once you start putting paperwork ahead of people, either you're that manager, which sucks, or just say, hey, not happening. Then I don't think I've had, I think between all my jobs, I think I've had like two Saturdays off in nine months. I forget the last time I had a true Sunday off. It's probably in like October or November last year. And I'm missing some events. Um, I know I do a pro wrestling show. I'm going to be missing when WWE comes to Orlando because I have to close that day, I think, 4 to midnight. It's going to suck. Missing Slammiversary. Missing a bunch of NXT. I miss the Blue Man group. That kind of annoyed me because I really wanted to see the Blue Man group 
trying to be cultured here, folks. I'm more than one-dimensional. I'm more than a pro wrestling fan. As you've seen in my videos. Because I do watch movies sometimes. Um, I've been wanting to see the Trans-Siberian Orchestra since forever. I don't know. But yeah, I just want to do the cultural events. I want to say, hey, I've done this, been there, done that. I don't know. So we'll see. So that's the major announcement. Yeah, whatever. I'm becoming a hobo. For real. For realsies. Yeah. Remember, I'm not a bum. Bums do not like working. They say, change. Give me your change. No, I want to go work. But I don't want to be taken advantage of at work either. Because that's not good nor healthy. And it's very bad. Enough about that nonsense. Let's talk about Slam Anniversary. Yes, I'm wearing my clothesline wrestling t-shirt. Because it is a wrestling new, wrestling organization neutral shirt. So the first match. And it's kind of late, so my eyes are kind of drying out. So if I like kind of blink funny, it's, it's not... It's that and I've been staring at screens and TVs forever. Yeah, staring at a computer screen for like... <laughs> yeah, staring at a computer screen for seven and a half hours. And then not being able to go home when you clock out. That's that's no bueno. To quote Senior Ijo del Hobo El Vagabundo 65 or whatever number he is. Yeah, so let's start off. Slammiversary! Um, probably have the Death Dolls. <laughs> and... What's her name now? Jeez, I can't barely read my own handwriting. Oh, I hope this doesn't gross up too many people. Oh yeah, Jody Threat. Taking on Gazelle Shaw, Savannah Evans, and Joe Vidal. Uh, you know what? This is probably good. This sounds like what? So yeah, it's gonna be the Death Dolls and Jody Threat winning. Um, saw the magic of video editing drop my contact lens of the carpet kind of need that i'm then in my stone cold lock of the night you have joe henry versus kenny king joe henry joe henry wins this is for the digital media championship at least Impact Wrestling gets creative with this bell title. It's not they just don't call it the TNT or, or the Hoes. I mean TBS Championship. Then we have the Coven taking on Masha Slamovich and Killer Kelly. I think Masha Slamovich and Killer Kelly win. Mainly because Masha Slamovich is leading around Killer Kelly... In a dog collar and chain. And for some reason, that's just hot. Wait, what's wrong with me saying that? Yeah. So Misha so Masha Slamovich and Killer Kelly win. They become new knockout tag team champions. Normally this would be my match of the night, but Slam Slamiversary this year is stacked. Uh, we have the extreme X match where they hang an X in the middle of the ring. This might actually be the first one. You know, so we have Speedball Mike Bailey taking on Jonathan Gresham versus Kushida versus Kenny King. Or no, I'm sorry, Kevin Knight. Change that. Kevin Knight, not Kenny King. That was the previous match. Versus Alan Angels. Part of me says they want to do right. Alan Angel put on a great promo. It makes me think that he's going to win. He might win. But you know what? I have to go with my heart of hearts. Impact treats certain wrestlers like gold, especially if they come from the WWE. Well, if they come from the WWE or even AEW. They've treated past ex-WWE people like gold. Kushida. Even though he's getting a little bit long in the tooth for doing that Ultimate X match. 
I think Kushida will win. And and, and I'll, I'll get to why later. Yeah, Kushida wins, though. Then we have Frankie Kazarian and his wife, his old lady, in his corner, taking on Eddie Edwards and Alicia Edwards in her man's corner. So, yeah, so this is... So, it's Eddie Edwards versus Frankie Kazarian. Their wives are in their corner. I... Uh, there's going to be shenanigans. Whenever Lish gets involved with anything... Hey, Lish. You know I'm single, right? But, yeah. Um, I think Eddie Edwards will win. Somehow, Alicia Edwards is going to get involved and we'll have shenanigans, which is good. Um, she's either going to do something to the wife or she's going to low blow Frankie Kazarian when he's like concerned about his... Something screwy is going to happen. This is impact. For goodness sakes. Uh, then we have the tag team match. It's... Oh, wait a second. Can never say have to do this. I'm ever announcing this particular team for anything tag team or singles or otherwise. Wait a second. Wait. What's that? Was that the theme I thought it was? Because. Um, for life, because I'm too sweet. That's right, gun. I got a new mag. I think I'm on the run now. I shot a human. Yeah, that's always good to hear. So yeah, so you have, again, like I said, the Bullet Club, because they're too sweet for life, in the form of Ace Austin, and, oh, who is, shoot, who's the other guy? It's not the Elite. I forget now. But yeah, Ace Austin's partner. The Spoiler Club. Who cares? Uh, let's see. They're going to take on... Moose. 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 And Brian Myers. Oh, I did crank that up a lot. That's why. Versus... Sammy Callahan and Rich Swan. I don't know if you got Rich Swan still wrestling. Versus, versus subculture, subculture with Flash, Flash Morgan Webster. Webster. And I don't know who the woman was. But yeah, she looks like the proper, proper. English bimbo. bimbo. And the other guy. I forget though. Only one I care about is Flash Morgan Webster. So I got a picture of him. And I have his autograph. Which I think got... I think it's in storage. It's still from the hurricane. I don't know. I do have to... Do make a new door of wrestling or door of something eventually. So yeah, I have who do I have winning that match? Oh yeah, I have Moose Moose from Moose Nation The Man Named Moose and Brian Myers. So yeah, that should be a fun match. And this is my th Oh wait. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's why I did that. This is called long-term booking, folks. So we have Chris Saban versus Leo Rush for the X Division title. What can happen, and this is one thing that I think could happen, and this would be good. Chris Saban wins. This is going to be a good match. It's not so much match of the night, but it's going to be a good match. Chris Saban's going to win. He's going to retain... The X Division Championship. Oh, what they really could do 
So yeah, so you have and okay, yeah, and then eventually Kushida's is going to challenge him, but I'll I'll, I'll explain my long term. What would be an amazing long term booking theory in a bit because it would really elevate not two but three people. So yeah, so we'll say Chris Sa Chris Saban wins. He defeats Leo Rush. He keeps the X Division belt. And then we have a. Uh, tag match, Bully Ray and Diener versus Scott Zamora and someone. Who knows? Um, you know what? You can snooze through this match. Because, you know what? Scott Zamora, whichever mystery partner he picks, they'll probably... Knowing Scott Zamora... Probably pick an Impact original. Oh, it could be that other guy from Decay now. Shoot. Oh, I forget his name. I don't know. It's going to be whoever Scott Demora picks. They're, they're going to win. I don't think that match means anything. And actually, in a pretty fun match, I think. Deanna Perazzo versus Trinity. Trinity, of course, is uh, Naomi, and it's tr Trinity. I forget if it's Trinity Fatu or Trinity. Uh, I'm gonna butcher this name. AOI. Yeah, whichever one, whatever the, the real Usos. Yeah, it's it's Naomi Uso. Tr I forget if it's Trinity AOI or Trinity Fatu. That's your real name or not? That might bug me for about 30 seconds right after I take a sip. Or it'll pass once I take a sip of the delicious sci-fi hamster wheel beer. But yeah. Um, Trini's going to win. Again, for my same reasoning, Impact loves ex-WWE people in their prime. And Deanna Prasa doesn't necessarily need the belt. She's been there in the knockouts upper tier. I think it's been mentioned for at least three years. And ever since she left NXT doing the job, I think the Nia Jax. But yeah, some, something like that. And then in my match of the night. We have in this corner the challenger. Hailing from what sounds like somewhere in England, but I actually lives in Virginia, with his hot wife, hot MILF wife, Nick Aldis. Bravo, bravo, bravo. And in this corner, from Detroit, Michigan, one half of the Motor City Machine Guns. Your Impact Heavyweight Champion of the World, Alex Shelley. This is my match of the night because this is going to be an amazing. This is going to be an amazing wrestling match. Nick Aldis's promo is going to be a chess match. This is going to be a good match. A good technical match. It's going to be technical, high-flying, high-impact match. It's going to, I think this match could really have everything. So, yeah. Um, that's the reason why this is my match of the night. And I have a new impact champion in Nick Aldis. Because what this means, and this is why, this is, okay, so we have Nick Aldis winning. Match of the night. Okay. That's it. Predictions over. Stop. Unless you're, like, running impact. Or a wrestling fan. Listen to this. What they could do. Impact loves to do slow burns. So Alex Shelley lost his belt. But it's Nick Aldis. Chris Saban can choose option C. And go after Nick Aldis. But as. So Nick Aldis is in the ring. He's doing his promo. Yes. I am the new Impact champion of the world. NWA no longer concerns me, impacts so much, but whatever Nick Aldis says. 
and I shall go home and have amazing love-making sessions with my MILF trophy wife, Mickey James Alice. Yes, you men will never know what her areolas and underparts look like, but I do every single morning, day, and night. Whoa, that's a little too intense by me. But pretty cool though. Um, so then, as Chris Saban says, you know what, I'm gonna exercise. And before he says it, Kushida shows up with the ultimate X symbol, the next impact pay-per-view, triple threat match for everything. Nick Aldis versus Chris Saban versus Kushida. And just have that build up. You're going to have tag matches that involves Nick Aldis teaming up with Kushida, taking on the Motor City Machine Guns. You're going to have Alex Shelley as a warm-up match go against Chris Saban. You're going to have Alex Shelley against, in his rematch, against Nick Aldis. You could have Alex Shelley versus Kushida. You could have Chris Saban. You could have so many different common. You can have a good host of combinations. So yeah, that's my reasoning behind my guesses, and they are pure guesses. So I have not seen Impact in forever. Because normally I work on Thursday. I've been working Thursday nights for a while, so I've not had a chance to watch Impact Wrestling. Again, last last time I saw it last week, and the only thing I remember, besides the awesome, actually I do remember one awesome promo. With the Motor City Machine Gun, Alex Shelley, and Chris Saban. But the only thing I remember from last week was was Masha Slamovich dragging Killer Kelly around with in, in a chained up jo- dog collar, and Killer Kelly looking like she liked it. Hey now. Yep, and that's it for my predictions and guesses for Impact Slammiversary. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Again, if you are going to have some sci-fi hamster wheel IPA please drink responsibly do not drink and drive for it there are hobos like me that have to pick up your refuse or at least aluminum off the street and I don't want to get hit, hit by a car it's bad but yeah, enjoy responsibly sit back chill out have a beer while you're watching this fine YouTube programming cheers So, other than that, to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe.